The Chicago Bulls played their second preseason game yesterday, winning a double overtime game against the defending champion Denver Nuggets. How much in this game can be taken away and looked at what the Bulls are trying to do? We're going to talk about that all and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host, Sarah Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content for today. First of all, we're going to talk about the Bulls game yesterday against the Denver Nuggets, right? And this was a game in which Zach Levine was aggressive early. And then, you know, it, it, was, it was nice to see Zach Levine come in with the type of game that he had where it just looked like Zach understood when and where he was going to score, and he basically dared anyone to try to stop him when he went into that mode, and that is when Zach Levine is his best, right? When he's playing aggressively, when he's taking players off the dribble, when he understands how to get to his spots, when to shoot the three, when to try to get to the rim. Those are things that you want to see from Zach Levine, and we saw it a, a little bit from Zach Levine. And then uh, Billy Donovan did something different in this game than what he did in the first preseason game. He actually ran Zach Levine with that second unit. We've talked about here on this channel how much – of a defensive potential that second unit has, right? And so when Zach Levine was out there with with a lot of those defensive players, it made sense, right? Everything was rocking and rolling, things like that. So, you know, and Billy Donovan also played his, star his starters about halfway through the third quarter in this game, wanting to really take an extended look at them. Now, none of them played over 25 minutes in this game still. We all know they're probably uh, playing more than that once the regular season goes on, right? But Zach Levine in this game, 8 for 15 from the field, one for five for three-point range, which is which is definitely concerning in that area. Four rebounds, three assists, three steals, and three turnovers from Zach Levine. But again, we saw that that the, the game that we need to see from Zach Levine as far as like the the style of we. Of course, we want him to hit it at a better percentage once the regular lights are on. But hey, we saw a little bit of that. Demar Derozan as well leading the Bulls in scoring in this game, going five of eleven. One from four from three-point range, taking those three pointers. Right. He also had one rebound, one assist, and four steals. From DeMar DeRozan, the thing with this team that you can tell is that this team is active defensively. Zach Levine, you got to go and watch this game. If you didn't actually watch this game, I really do implore you to go watch it. Zach Levine in this game was really engaged defensively. He was in it, right? And so, you know, that's what you want to see from this team. Vooch also with 10 points going 4 of 8 from the field. One three-pointer taken from Vooch. Four rebounds, two assists, two steals from Vooch. And overall in this game, the Chicago Bulls had 16 steals on the night. Now, some of those came via the garbage time when a lot of the young and G League players were in there. But overall, you're still seeing much of the same framework from the team that we're trying to see, right? Playing with quicker pace, moving the ball around. They got to get the turnovers down, though. Some, in my opinion, those turnovers are um, really, really hurting the team, right? Uh, they had 11 turnovers in the first half of the game. You want to play better than that um, in the first half uh, as far as the turnover portion of it. I kind of give them a little, a little leeway for that just because, in my opinion, this is a team that's going from being a heavy isolation team to more moving the ball around. So kind of a byproduct of that when you're initially trying to make that change is going to be uh, some turnovers. But, you know, it, it, it is what it is there. When you look at the first half from this game, uh, DeMar DeRozan, 14 points in the first half. Zach Levine, 10 of his points coming in the first half as well. And that's kind of what you want to see from this team, right? Um, there were some some signs for concern in the first half of this game. The Bulls, uh, you know, in, 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 in far as the three-point, uh, in the first half, they shot the ball 28% from three-point range in the first half of the game. Now, they took 14 threes. We know they're trying to be a, a, a higher-volume three-point shooting team. They just got some things that they need to work up and tighten up as far as in that area, right? So we'll end up seeing that with that Chicago Bulls team, if they can hit that at a better percentage. 46% um, overall from the field in the first half, um, but we still tied it. When you look at the first half for the Nuggets, they shot the ball almost 65% from overall from the field and 50% from three-point range, but we were still tied with that team. And I think that's really indicative, and it shows the defense that the, that's this Bulls team was playing with and how they were getting on the boards, right? Yeah, a lot of those offensive rebounds were by Andre Drummond, who Drum is just padding stats in preseason, no less, right? Uh, but outside of that funny uh, part of the story, we mainly saw um, the Bulls, who's going to be that 10-man rotation in the first half of the game. And I would assume we played a little bit better in the second half than the first half of the game. But still, Io showing some things as well um, in this game overall. You're starting to see that from Io, like him really understanding 
how to how to how he needs to go out there and get his and earn his minutes right, being aggressive on the boards, getting three offensive rebounds overall in this game, right? Um, but yeah, even with aggressive Zach Levine, solid DeMar DeRozan, solid Vooch, passive P returned in this game, and it was it sucked to see, right? A lot of it was in the first half. Um, in that third quarter, he got pulled early, and Torrey Craig got inserted in that basically with those starters, and you immediately felt the energy difference. Now, I know some Bulls fans, and I know you guys, I love the community, are going to make a knee-jerk reaction based off that, and I can understand it, right? Because when you see a player regress back to what was 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 the biggest concern with them so far in their career, it doesn't feel good, right? And it, and it, and it drums up that worry. And I'll say this, and Patrick Williams played 18 minutes and 44 seconds in this game, right? And the aggression wasn't there. It's, he started off solid defensively, uh, you know, going fighting through picks, uh, staying on Aaron Gordon, forcing Aaron Gordon out of a couple of shots early in the game. Uh, he, he only took one three-pointer, I think, in this game as well, didn't make it. But we did not see the aggressive P. Will we saw in the first preseason game at all in this game, right? And so, you know, Billy Donovan sitting him early in the third kind of is what it is there. Torrey Craig came in. We saw the energy from Torrey Craig that we want to see from Patrick Williams. And, you know, we'll see if Patrick Williams, first, so far, one preseason game aggressive, one of passive P. Let's see how it comes out in the third preseason game. But I said this over on Locked on Bulls. I think I said it on the post game show here as well. If P. Will is not going to be aggressive, Torrey Craig is going to take his starting spot. Just period. It just is what it is there. I'm just going to be frank on that. I'm going to bury the lead. If P. Will can't find a way to stay aggressive. Now, by that, I do not mean he needs to score a bunch of points at night in and night out. But you got to stay aggressive. You got to take players off the dribble. You got to be out, go out there and defense, fight for boards, right? These are things we don't have to worry about Torrey Craig doing. So, you know, hopefully that happens with P. Will. We'll see. Alice Caruso also in this game finding his offensive flow. Four three pointers made from Alice Caruso. You know, he talked about how he wanted to be more aggressive on the offensive side of the ball this year. While he's focused a lot on defense over his career, he really wants to be more aggressive on the offensive side. And I tell you what, not saying that Alice Caruso is going to hit four three-pointers every single game, or we should expect that level of volume from him. But if he can hit the open ones, that really does change his game. It changed uh, the, this bench unit as well. That's a very uh, a defensive bench unit. And so, you know, it is what it is with that. Kobe White, again, got got the next start. Uh, we, You know, some of us thought, I, I thought that, you know, maybe uh, Billy Donovan had even alluded to changing up the starting lineup to take a look at some things. We didn't see that. Kobe White played a pretty solid game in this one as well. Again, is this going to jump out the stat sheet on you? No, not necessarily, right? He had eight points going 4-7 of seven from the field, four assists, one rebound in this game, three turnovers. We had a lot of turnovers overall as a team. Every member of the starting unit had three turnovers except for P. Will, who had one. Um, but we, we got to see Kobe still be that point guard, still be what we want to see Kobe develop and grow in his game. So very solid things there. Javon Carter as well. Listen, I said it. Javon Carter is going to be – so one of the, the favorite bulls amongst fans here. And Javon Carter is just, hey, that dude is, he's, hey, listen, eight points in 17 minutes, four assists, right? That is, that is nice. And Javon Carter is going to find his role here on the Chicago Bulls team, whether he's starting, coming off the bench, whatever it is, you trust that he's going to give you solid minutes in that, right? So I like that from Javon Carter as well. But then let's get into, so we talked about the starters. We've talked about passive P returning, talked about IO a little bit, Caruso, we got to talk about the young guys in this game, specifically Julian Phillips, man. Yes, he was playing against second and third stringers, so I want to be clear there, right? But Julian Phillips was just aggressive on, on the defensive side of the ball. He had a, a highlight reel dunk that was just amazing, right? Um, and then in the, in, the, in the double overtime period, he was one of the better players. And Dalen Terry came along in the, in the overtime as well. Um, you know, still uncontrolled energy. He still has some things he definitely needs to improve on. But overall, Julian Phillips played so much better in this game. And this goes to what I said. This is why you need if players, if you're trying to develop young players and they're good, you have a hope that they're going to be part of your rotation at some point, you have to get them NBA minutes because that is the iron sharpens iron, right? And we saw Julian Phillips figure it out as this game went along. 19 minutes player from Julian Phillips, right? He had eight points, two rebounds, one assist in this game, one turnover. But you had to really watch the game to understand his defense that he brought to this game. Really good defense Julian Phillips brought. Really good energy as well from Julian Phillips and a much more aggressive game from Julian Phillips than what we saw in that first game as well. Um, so I'd like to see that. Carly Jones hit a big shot um, in the overtime period, but otherwise it was a, it was a, a quiet-ass day for him. Quentin Jackson had another big uh, dunk and solid night overall with seven points, uh, all that coming after the third quarter and in the double overtime period. So, you know, it is what it is there. Terry Taylor, 
listen, Terry Taylor, a, a, a plus minus of, of plus seven in this game, 10 points, seven rebounds, four assists, one steal in 22 minutes. Listen, when you at, when you look at the back of the end bench guy, the Terry Taylor with the aggression and the energy he plays with, I think he can he can carve out some minutes for him on this roster. I'm not going to say a lot. I'm not going to say consistently every game, but he can carve out some things for him in this game. Now, so that's kind of my thoughts. If you guys want the more in detail, I did have a post game show, live post game show after the game. Go in there and check that out. But overall, again, like I said, to kind of bring it all together, we we continue to see the evolution of the Chicago Bulls offense. They need to get the turnovers underway. We need to shoot at an overall better clip as well. Uh, Billy Donovan adding to that after the game, he said this. I thought overall, the guys moved the ball. We tried to uh, to play the right way. I thought we had some really good spray out opportunities. I felt we played downhill. I thought we had really good balance. We didn't shoot the ball particularly well from three. And that really is, is an honest evaluation of this game. All those things are true, right? I think this Bulls team got to take care of the ball a little bit better. They got to hit the shots at a better rate. But overall, they are playing the way that you want them to play, and you hope that that's going to you know, come out. And I will say in this game, right, the different Nuggets played their starters that whole first half, and then some in that second quarter as well. And when the, the Bull starters were in there after the second half and a little bit in the third quarter we played, listen, things were looking good for the Chicago Bulls. It really seemed like they got rocking and rolling. They found their rhythm. They found their balance. We just got to keep it going, and we'll see what happens with this Bulls team. But overall, some good things. Now, coming out of this game, the Bulls waved two players. They waved Max Hedengegger, and they also uh, uh, waved forward Henry Drell. Now, I expect both these guys to be on the G League squad, so there's not a lot of huge takeaways from this because I think they're both going to stay in that Bulls organization. Henry Drell has been here for three years already. I think he's going to stay. I think they're invested in him as a G League player. You know, you just got to eventually cut down the roster. And, you know, we got three preseason games left. How we play over those preseason games, they're trying, maybe trying to identify who's going to, uh, you know, make that G League team. No Adama Sanago, no OB in this game either, but Tim didn't play either. And I think that that's kind of indicative of the fact that I think the Bulls understand that they have something in, in Bidham. And I think because of that, you're not really going to see. They wanted to look, take a look at the guys. They weren't quite sure if they were going to make that G League roster. I think that's why you didn't necessarily see them check in this game. I hope that's the case at least. Um, because, listen, if, if they're down on them already, I don't know what to say about Billy Donovan or the coaching staff. But I really think when it comes down to Bidham, and I know a lot of guys wanted to see them in this game, I think it comes down to they understand what they need Batim to work on. That is his is being able to take players off the dribble at the NBA level. That's his defense because while he was a very active defender over in EuroLeague, the physicality of the NBA game can be very different for players in an adjustment period. But I think they realize what they have in, in, in those two players in their own two-way contracts, right? Justin Lewis didn't play either. We didn't see any of our guys on two-way contracts play because – they know what they're going to be, and they know they have that development plan, I think, for those guys. So, you know, if you're worried about those guys not playing much, I don't necessarily think you've got much to worry about. At least I hope not. We've, I've been wrong before. Let's hope it's not in this case. But, all right, so let's move on from that. Like, Billy Donovan was asked before the game yesterday about his job security, and this has been something that was asked. Shout out to uh, CP, the franchise, who was in the live stream last night from Knicks Fan TV, and uh, he asked about Billy Donovan's job security, too, and you know, he said this, this Billy Donovan said this before the game. He says, I understand the expectations wherever you're at. And for me, I had five straight years at the University of Florida where we played for a national championship in 2000 and then five straight years of getting knocked out in the first round and second round in the NCAA tournament. And people weren't happy. I wasn't either. I totally get and understand it's a result oriented business. I totally get that. What makes this place special is that they obviously have a really passionate fan base. We also have an enormous amount of history in the past of incredible success. For me, I take that very, very serious. I don't think that, however, my relationship with Arturis or uh, Mark Eversley or Jerry or Michael changes how I go about each and every day, trying to work and help our group be the best it can. So, you know, what, what did I take from that? Billy Donovan is securing his job, right? And if anybody had any doubts for that, listen, I get it. It is results-based, and you do have to have a certain level of success, right? Billy Donovan is going to keep his job if we have a 15-win season. But the Bulls aren't going to be that bad. And while I know some, you know, the, the stat and bet online and stuff, stuff like that had that Billy John Donovan has the best odds to get fired, people that know this franchise, and you know, after the secret extension, Billy ain't going anywhere anytime soon. Right. I think I would say that we probably have Billy for at least another two years, if not more than that. Um, the fact that we still don't know what his extension was, how many years it's for, what the price on it is, it hasn't kicked in yet. 
you know, I think that shows a sign from this front office. And Arturis has talked a lot about Billy Donovan being collaborative, and that's important for this team. Hell, one of the reasons that ownership moved on from, uh, and that it was a different front office, moved on from Tom Thibodeau is because Tom Thibodeau wasn't as collaborative. He had the us versus the front office mindset with, with the, uh, the players on the team. So when it comes down to it, Billy is going to be around for a while. And I do think, in being fair and honest, right, do I think Billy Donovan is the coach for the Chicago Bulls, the perfect coach? No, I don't, right? But I do think that we've, we're have seeing changes with the Chicago Bulls offense, and hopefully p- player utilization is a little bit better as well. And if those things hold true, we're in for a better season. Now, you know, when it comes down to it, the ceiling of this Bulls team, you know, it, it can be discussed all up and day, all day long, right? There aren't too many coaches right now that I think up the ceiling of this Bulls team. I think there are some, absolutely. And I think if you change the play style, but Let's see what, what happens this year. But Billy ain't going to be fired. That's just really what it comes down to. I know a lot of you guys want it. Hell, I would not mind uh, seeing Billy Donovan go and uh, a better coach come in. But he's going to be here. And he's going to be here for a minute, right? And whenever the Bulls do move on from Billy Donovan, I hope they don't chase another big name. I hope they do their research to bring in a coach that is going to set a tone and culture and they can be here for years. I don't care about going after big names. I ca- care about going after and finding the right guy both in the short term and long term for this team. And, you know, whatever that is, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But Billy Donovan's going to be here for a while. I think Bulls fans need to just come to that realization. But that's my time for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Make sure you guys are following the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullscentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related, thanks to you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See red if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.